Good morning. Welcome to Ascension and Holy Trinity Episcopal Church, where all are welcome because all belong. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all, to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, 
and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the, the, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels. 
now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of, dis of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house of the disciples... Uh, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that when Jesus saw this, in order that, that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up on his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and put the spotlight on the elephant in the room. There's a, a bit of a discomfort for many of us, and that discomfort comes from the word divorce, said multiple times in our gospel reading today. The Pharisees know what the law says, and they attempt to mess around with Jesus again. 
And their testing of Jesus drives me a bit batty, and it's probably because of how much we test Jesus today. The, the elephant, really, is that we don't talk about divorce much because, to be quite honest, it's painful, right? And our experiences of divorce are vastly different. If we have 45 people in here, there are people with happy marriages, there are people who are struggling with their marriages, there are people um, who have been divorced, who are considering divorce. It's a hard, hard thing. I saw the gospel for this Sunday on Monday, and I thought, oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> for many listening today, it's painful because it brings back memories. Mark's test is painful because, like the Pharisees of his day, this text has been used as a weapon, really, to judge one another. It's been used as a weapon to manipulate God's children into staying in unhealthy relationships that were possibly never healthy and right and loving in the first place. Throughout the entire narrative arc of Scripture, I encounter again and again a God of radical, of inclusive love and grace. A Christ who reaches out time and time again to all God's creation, as the, the beautiful hymn of praise alluded to this morning. As we read this snippet of Scripture, we can falsely view it and understand it as a moral lesson from Jesus on divorce, where we can feel good and righteous, maybe, if we still happen to be happily married, or, or one where we experience guilt if we aren't married. That isn't the reason for this lesson in Holy Scripture. It is not a moral discourse on divorce. Marriage in first century Palestine, we have to remember, was far, far different than marriage in our modern day. And I know that some of us sometimes, when we look at, at the plight of the way some things today are, we can, we can wail over the fact that marriage can be taken so lightly today. And, and sometimes people I know wish for all oh, the good old days of marriage. Remember those good old days, if we go back far enough to Jesus' day, those good old days were the days where men could divorce their wives for burnt toast. In other words, for any little reason they felt. And the women had extremely little recourse. Marriages back then were more about property exchanges, and we, we still have a little bit of a, of a hanger-on with our, our contemporary marriage liturgy. Who gives this woman away? Who gives, the, how about, who gives this man? How about God gives all? But the women were considered property. And abuse? I pray you know God never wants anyone, man or woman, to tolerate physical or emotional abuse. The abuse of any kind is unacceptable. Psychologists will tell us quickly how difficult it is for a person to leave an abusive person. It's easy for me in a pulpit, or it's easy for us at coffee hour to talk to one another, well, they should just leave that relationship. That's abusive. They need to get out. That may be true. I think that it is true. But there's a lot of mental and emotional work for the abused to process. When I lived back in, in the state and diocese of West Virginia, one of my best friends was Debbie Short. Uh, Debbie worked for the Diocese of West Virginia, actually, but she was also a parishioner back at St. Stephen's in Beckley. I loved working with Debbie Short because she was an advocate for social justice. She knew God's love is expressed whenever, wherever justice occurs. And she knew, in southern West Virginia especially, she knew the plight of women in that part of the state under abusive men. And so she created the Women's Resource Center, a safe place for abused women with all the resources where they and their children could be both physically safe and grow into emotional safety again, away from the abuser. No, God does not intend for any abused soul to stay in a marriage. And Debbie worked with countless women to establish their safety. I believe today that what this lesson is about is God calling us into relationship, being together, being in union with one another through true, authentic, and vulnerable relationship with God as we are with one another. But the Pharisees exemplify mercy. Sometimes it's hard to find out what the human condition is. The Pharisees exemplify our human condition so clearly. We hear some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you? He said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. Hardness of heart. When we think we know better than God, we have hardness of heart. When we think we can test God, we have hardness of heart. 
when we are fearful and when we are afraid and when we lean into the false security of certainties. I love certainty. Isn't certainty a good thing and we miss it during the pandemic? But when we lean into this sort of black or white, all or nothing kind of thinking, mercy, our hearts are full of hardness. Calling Jesus, calling again and again, Jesus continues asking and inviting us to enter into a loving relationship with God through loving one another. And religious leaders, not all, but some religious leaders of Jesus' day, as well as often in our day, religious leaders today, plant seeds of doubts in our hearts because Jesus wasn't following and Jesus doesn't follow the way of the establishment. Jesus is not about blindly accepting the status quo and keeping the powerful and the privileged in their power and privilege through obediently following all the jots and tittles of the law. Jesus loves you just where you and just as we are today. Whether we are married, whether we are unmarried, whether we are divorced, whatever gender we may experience and express, if we're LGBTQI, God loves you just as you are, no exceptions the end of Jesus' response to the Pharisees. Manipulation happens, and Mark continues. People were bringing the little children up to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw their sternness, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them. It's for such as these as the kingdom of God belongs. Jesus' love extends to the vulnerable. And the children of Jesus' day were extremely vulnerable. They weren't like the children of ours today, where where they have everything that they need and um, they're allowed to be children. The children of Jesus' day weren't seen of much worth because they couldn't work and earn an income. The disciples tried to shoo the children away from Jesus like they'd shoo off pigeons because children weren't held in such high esteem. And to the disciples thinking Jesus had far more important things to do than deal with children, are you kidding me? Jesus is indignant at that. Love that word. Indignant, showing anger, annoyance, and unfair treatment. Let the children come to me. Let the vulnerable come to me. Let the marginalized, let those people who don't understand us and who we don't understand, let all creation come to me. Do not stand in the way. Jesus longs for us to be in a relationship with God through our relationships with each other. Whether those relationships be in a marriage, whether we have children, close friendships, parishioners, people with beloved pets, and on and on. Religion should never be a weapon against another, a system that causes harm by causing us to doubt God's unconditional love because of who we love. Jesus responded to the Pharisees' question by asking what Moses commanded. In other words, Jesus helps put the good news in the context that they would understand. Where would we find Jesus today? I believe that we would find Jesus loving the homeless, being present with children needing parents, sitting with the marginalized through the good work of parishioners like you as we share in ministry that we name outreach. It's ministry. I came across a story on social media that spoke to me deeply, um, and it was a really good story, and actually I decided I'm going on a little sleep. My wife is out of town, and I was the one who got to stay up late last night with the boys, so... I'm not thinking very clearly this morning. I had a story that I decided to omit for this service, but I started it now. Encounter Jesus in your relationships today. When they're broken, may we do our best to work with God to reconcile them. May we relinquish judgment, and may we take on authentic and vulnerable relationship with God who first chose to love us, with our hearts on fire for God's holy inclusion, where we witness Jesus' love through how we treat and through how we love one another. Amen. 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 Let us now stand together and reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and 
was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Ralph Corley, Mike Bray, and for all the departed. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially for Debbie, Bob and Wendy, Nola, Top, Carolyn, Ron, Mary, Debbie, Mike and Peter, Lindsay and Phil, and Edith. Let us pray our vision that we may become a vital and growing faith community with overflowing worship services and Christian growth opportunities. A church with compassion-centered ministries through which all find a place and take God's love into the world. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. Mighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Sarah Cahall is going to give an announcement about a different communion hymn. Hello, friends. Hello. I'm like talking to you every single week. Um, first, hello to all of our ANHT singers that are back here this Sunday. We have all kinds of new faces. So Big choir, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and this is the last time I will say this to you for a while. Our handbell choir starts today after church, so please come join us if you would like to. All you have to do is go like this. That's it. That's all it takes. <laughs> Um, for communion today, in place of the communion anthem that is printed first, we are going to sing H304, which is I Come With Joy to Meet My Lord, oh, so it fun. should be one y'all know. Yep. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. Hymn 304, when we're receiving communion, 
Do we have birthdays or anniversaries before I forget? Chuck, come on up. After we bless the anniversaries and birthdays, we're going to hear from Ian Stevens about his why. Happy birthday. Thank you. Let's see one over there. All right. Chuck, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Let's pray together for Chuck's birthday. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Chuck. Ian? Ian Stevens serves on our vestry and has been assisting with some uh, understandings of stewardship as well, so Ian's going to share with us right now. But the greatest of these is love. My name is Ian Stevens, and I've been a member here for 18 years. I was asked to speak today about my why. Why do I come to church on Sundays? Why a &HT? Why the Episcopal Church? So where should I begin? I could talk about the importance of tradition in bringing me to church each Sunday. I am a cradle Episcopalian, and the right to service, like this morning, in particular evokes many deep and comforting memories from my childhood. The Anglican hymns I grew up singing are as familiar to me as any popular music, probably more so. I could talk about setting an example for my children. I've brought them up in the church, helping them to learn about God's love, the life of Jesus, the practices and traditions of the church, the importance of giving our time and treasure, the power of prayer. I could talk about the power of prayer, the connection to God I feel when I'm in this space, the ways in which my faith has grown. But the greatest of these is love. We've heard many times about God's love for the world, about Jesus' unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive love for all of us. We know the two greatest commandments, to love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. ANHT is where we get to practice living into these two commandments. Sometimes we fail and sometimes we succeed, but I believe we are here to encourage one another to keep learning how to be more fully, how more fully reflect God's love for each of us. This is my why. We are a loving community, both in the way we show love for God, but also how we show love for each other and the broader community. Can we be an even more loving community? Absolutely. As Bishop Michael Curry said in his book, Love is the Way, our job is to love as witnesses to the way of love that came to us from Jesus' teachings. I want to thank you for the love you have shown me and my family over the years. Thank you for encouraging me to grow into God's love as a member of this community. And thank you for continuing to strive to love God and to love our neighbors. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ian. I want to thank those who were able to help out with Ralph Corley's funeral this past Friday. It was a beautiful funeral, and that was because of the ministries that, I'm not going to try and say groups because I'll forget one. All the different groups of people who helped put the funeral liturgies together, thank you. It was very beautiful. I also want to thank Kim McCracken, Amy Weingardner, Cindy Ballou, and Nikki DeWitt. All of them helped out uh, with uh, handing out water and flyers yesterday morning and in the afternoon. We gave out about 185, give or take, bottles of water uh, to folks who were thirsty at the Fall Festival. It was a great way. We had a booth there. It was a great way at Fall Fest to, to say hello to people, for people to know that there's a church here. Um, they had a lot of nice water, and it was just a really good way to connect. But it was a lot easier because Nick, or not Nick, Kim helped me prep and helped get stuff over there. It would have taken a lot longer had it been one of us doing that. Um, Nikki and Cindy came a little bit later and they helped hand out more water. I was able to get lunch because Kim was there and could take the booth. And then um, we ran out of water and we had given all we had to give. So we, uh, Cindy helped me pack up and, and helped me get stuff back to the church. So thank you all for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, we are having fellowship hour after this service in our parish hall because right now Christina Brandewee is going to lead that for us. We'd love to have someone lead coffee hour for us next week. You can simply sign up on the sheet in the back 
and uh, that'll let us know you'd like to do that. We're also looking for folks to serve as ushers. As much like handbells, it's not that complicated. You have some movement here. To usher, one of the main things that we need to do is this. Can you see my smile in video world? It's not a good smile. But the, the main thing, we need happy people. So if you suffer from like not wanting to be happy, it'd, it'd be a bad job for you. But um, if you're a happy, pleasant personality, you like to smile and you like to greet people, uh, we, we have many talented ushers here, and, and they do a very good job. And I know that it would be great to get some more people into that system, some more people could experience that time to get to greet people. So you're invited to do that. And let's see, Ian took care of stewardship. This Thursday, October the 7th, we're going to have Holy Eucharist at Maple Knoll Village and their chapel space at 4 p.m. You are welcome to attend that if you would like. Love to have folks out for that. On Sunday, October the 10th at 3 o'clock, we're going to have a blessing of the animals, hopefully outside in our gathering place. So that will be on Sunday, October the 10th, 3 p.m. We have that next week at October the 13th, an outreach meeting where we're going to discuss uh, how to spend the rest of this year's outreach budget uh, with a couple of different ideas that we have. So, and it's online, it's on Zoom. So if you have a, probably a phone even, you can get on onto Zoom and do that. So I encourage you to do that. And then today, after this service, after we spend some time at coffee hour, we have chapter one of the adult formation book discussion, The Church Cracked Open by Stephanie Spellers. Uh, what we decided last week is we would do one chapter at a time. So last week we talked the intro. Uh, this next week we talked about chapter one. So that means that next Sunday we talk about chapter... No, nope, no we don't. Next week, Jim Getchy, thank you for playing. Next week, Jim Getchy will be with us. Uh, he's going to wrap up his 8 of 8 uh, inclusion and diversity series. So Jim will be with us next Sunday the 10th. And then the following week we'll be on chapter 2. So anyway, thank you for being here. Remember that well, communion is welcome to all people. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts with praise and with thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, we forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Amen. 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 Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, 
super heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood. 
of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hands. The blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen.
peace to love and to serve the Lord.